Welcome into another Teacher Tutorial Tuesday. I'm your host, Coach Suho, and I'm here to talk to you about quick boom card creation. Basically, I'm going to talk to you about cloning decks to make it faster to create new decks. We're going to tackle four things. What is cloning? Why would you clone a deck? When is it useful to do it? And I'll even go through an example for you. Of course, along the way, we're going to have a Nora nugget to keep you entertained. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to comment down below with what you'd like to know more about. So first, what does it mean to clone a deck? Simply put, you're making a copy of it. Any of the decks that you've created, you can click on clone, and it'll give you the option to clone your template card or to clone your entire deck. So that brings us to our next question. Why would you want to clone a boom deck? Here I have two windows open with two different boom decks. To create these, I cloned one to make it easier and faster to upload the other one. Now, one is addition, one's multiplication. But they have the same directions. You're going to type in your answer. They have a similar layout, which is another thing that I purposely do when I'm creating lessons so that I can clone decks to make them faster. Um, and they also use, in this case, they use the same exercises, which I think is fine in this case because one set is addition, the other set is multiplication. If I was making um, multiple addition boom decks, then I would want the exercises to be kind of different or in a different order to keep it fresh for the kids. But regardless, I would definitely have exercises in my boom deck because that's what we do at fit for kids Now, the next question is, when would we do it? So... I'm going to show you an example where I'm going to take this um, addition, mixed level addition boom deck. I'm going to clone it because I want to make a level two version of this and possibly a level three version. Um, the good news is, is that the format and thing, uh, all of it is going to be the same. The difference is, is I'm going to upload different backgrounds. All right, now let's go through an example. So I want to take this mixed edition level one and I want to make a level two. So I'm going to click on clone. In this case, I don't want to clone just the template card because the template card for this is pretty basic. I want to clone the entire deck. This is going to allow me to have all the sounds and everything that I had for the first one in the second one. Once I clone it, one thing that I always do is I go to my details and I change the name right away. That way, so that I know what this is, and I know um, how to find it easier. Another thing I do early on is I change the cover image to just a general image. A lot of times I'll just use my profile picture, or I'll pick an image that doesn't make sense for the activity so that it stands out. This is also a time where I can change some of the details, but you can also do that later. I don't want to publish anything yet because it's not quite finished. <laughs> Now that we have updated our title and our details, we can go ahead and start adding in the new background images. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, you can click on this, navigate to where it is saved. And by this, I mean you click on change background image, then you navigate to where it's saved, and it changes it. We don't want to change the sound because I've made an addition mixed sound for the first slide that's going to work regardless of which level we have. This slide we don't need to change because it's going to be the same. Now this you could again click on background image and navigate where and then change it or you could click up here where you do new cards from images which I think is the route I'm going to go. So what I'm going to do that'll allow me to just have to navigate there once mixed level two Make sure that you click them in the order you want them in. Once you have that, you can click OK, and it will go ahead and drop in all of the ones. Now, I'll know which ones are new because they have 10 as their answer automatically. So, like, this is an old one. I can get rid of that one. And then from here on out, all of these are going to be new. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete my old uh, cards. Oops, these ones are old because I almost skipped them because I thought they had 10s, but they did not. They had 5s as their answers. 
So go ahead and delete all your old slides. You'll notice that I have three slides and then an exercise, three slides and then an exercise. I'm gonna keep my exercises in there. I'm just gonna change the order that they're in. Now, one of the reasons I cloned this um, was so that I didn't have to re-upload this slide and find the sound again. It's already in there. All I have to do is I have to drag it into its proper position. Once I get it up there, then it's a matter of really just going through and changing my answer choices. I'm gonna do another one, two, three, and then an exercise. So really, I'm gonna fast forward this so that you can see how it's done. Just wanted to pop in to say, thanks for checking out our video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Of course, hit the bell for notifications so that you don't miss another Teacher Tutorial Tuesday. All right, now that I have my exercises in the right spots, it's a matter of going in and changing my answers, which you would do by double clicking on your box, getting rid of that, and changing it to the correct answer. Of course, you can double check to make sure that it is indeed correct. So again, all you have to do is go in, change your answers that the students would write in, and voila you are finished. While I do this, why don't we go over and check out the Nora Nugget. Take it away, Nora. Hey, y'all. Cloning is great, but don't forget, you can also copy and paste by using your keyboard shortcuts. That's a great way to take something from one slide and copy and paste it onto another, especially if you only want it on a few slides. Anyways, I gotta get out of here. I see a mouse. Bye. Thanks, Nora, for that nugget. Um, as you can see, we're pretty much finished. I'll do a final few things, like I'll go into the details, I'll change the cover image. Um, typically, when I put in a cover image, I'll just use one of the slides. I know that people often will make um, activity-specific thumbnails. Um, I like just picking something that's in here so they can get a sense of what's basically look at a, an additional little mini preview. Um, with that in mind, I know that the preview is only the first couple of slides, so I'll pick a slide that's later in the presentation. And then I'll update my description because these are not sums of five or less. They are sums of 10 or less. Of course, you can add more details, and I'm sure many people do. Um, but before I publish, the final thing that I'll do is... I go in and I preview it. I run through the entire thing to make sure that everything works the way that I would like it to. Hopefully you found this helpful. Please like, subscribe, and check us out next Tuesday for the newest Teacher Tutorial Tuesday. Take care.